Ephes, lying in the Mojave Desert, 30 miles southeast of Las Vegas. Straddling the border between Nevada and Arizona, it plugs the walls of Black Canyon and holds back the mighty Colorado River. Hoover Dam was the most ambitious and technically challenging engineering project of its day. It certainly was the greatest challenge in its time and still holds up as one of the greatest challenges in, in the history of, of modern technology. The workforce were ruthlessly exploited. They endured appalling living conditions, extreme temperatures, and poisonous fumes. 112 of them died. To build this groundbreaking structure was an extraordinary feat, requiring daring, bravery, and the vision to push the boundaries of engineering. The prospect of constructing a dam on the Colorado River, the technological challenges, there were some who said it couldn't be done. Dam construction is notoriously difficult and dangerous. The risks involved are huge. And if a dam fails, the consequences could be catastrophic. Hoover Dam measures 221 meters high and is 201 meters thick at its base. In total, it comprises about 3.4 million cubic meters of concrete. Running through the American Southwest, the Colorado is one of the world's most powerful and unpredictable rivers. Every spring, it would break its banks, causing massive floods. The result, widespread flooding that destroyed crops and the livelihoods of thousands. The government instructed engineers at the Bureau of Reclamation to come up with a solution. The boys at the Bureau decided to build a dam. Not just any dam, but the biggest one ever built. This super dam would not only control the flooding, it would also harness the enormous power of the Colorado River to provide electricity for thousands of homes. And the site the engineers chose was Black Canyon, an 800 feet deep gorge carved out by the river. Black Canyon lay in the heart of the desert. There was no local workforce, no infrastructure, and no direct transport links. It would be hard to imagine a more desolate spot for one of the world's most ambitious engineering projects. But there were two things in its favor. 30 miles away, the railroad ran through a small outpost called Las Vegas. Now the gambling capital of the world. The Vegas Railroad would act as a vital supply line. And immediately upriver lay a vast plain that would be an ideal location for America's largest reservoir. This place was isolated, and yet somebody comes along and says, we're going to build the biggest dam in the world there. What an ego. <laughs> that ego belonged to chief engineer Frank Crow. Crow had carved out a reputation as a gifted dam builder. But a project on this scale was his lifelong ambition. As a result, he was determined to get the job done at any cost. Crow quit his job to be more involved on site, where he drove the workforce relentlessly. The timing of Hoover Dam suited Crow's ruthless methods down to the ground. Its construction would span the years 1931 to 35, the height of America's Great Depression, when a quarter of the workforce were desperate for a job. Hoover Dam was welcomed as a way to get many of them back to work. People were desperate to feed themselves and their families. There wasn't much work. Hoover Dam was the mecca. As news of the project spread, thousands of hopeful workers and their families flocked to the desert lands around Black Canyon. Within three weeks of the project's announcement, the local employment office received 12,000 applications for work. The construction company had a ready-made workforce of desperate men. 
and they were not slow to exploit them. These men were hostages. There were thousands waiting to take their job. They would put up with it. They'd take the risk. A punishing schedule lay ahead of the workers. The dam had to be finished in just seven years and cost no more than $125,392,000, nearly £788 million in today's money. What's more, if Frank Crow and his team failed to complete on time and budget, it would cost the company a massive $3,000 a day in financial penalties. The pressure was on. In April 1931, construction began. The inexperienced workforce began blasting tunnels through the solid rock walls of the canyon. Stage one was to create an area of dry riverbed upon which the dam would be built. To do this, the Colorado had to be diverted away from the construction site. The men must excavate four tunnels, two on each side of the canyon, each measuring some 4,000 feet long. These would act as diversion channels for the river, while two temporary, or coffer dams, would prevent the water from taking its natural course. But this technique had never been attempted on such a monumental scale. There was no room for mistakes. These tunnels would have to handle the full force of one of America's most powerful rivers. A current of approximately 850 cubic meters of water a second. People would have probably looked at them and said they were just absolutely bonkers to try to even think to build out here. To add to the problems, the summer of 1931 proved to be one of the hottest on record. By July, temperatures had risen to a blistering 49 degrees Celsius, taking a vicious toll on the workers. The workers themselves, who had never seen anything like this before, who had never encountered heat like this before, becoming dehydrated, were dealing with heat prostration. And so that first year, there was tremendous loss of life. The historic project was underway, but further progress would come at an enormous cost. When it was completed in 1935, the Hoover Dam would become the tallest, largest and heaviest dam in the world. A structure on this scale had never been attempted in such a challenging environment. It immediately dwarfed one of Chief Engineer Frank Crow's earlier projects, the Ararock Dam in Idaho. At 106 meters high, Ararock was the tallest dam in the world, but it was half the height of Hoover and a third of its width. But from the very beginning, building on this unprecedented scale posed enormous technical challenges and required extraordinary feats of human endurance. By May 1931, the workforce at Hoover Dam were drilling their way through the solid rock walls of Black Canyon. The aim? To create four tunnels to divert the course of the mighty Colorado River. With only seven years to complete the project, Frank Crow devised a rigid schedule and pushed the men to the limit. Work went on around the clock, seven days a week. The men got only three days off a year. Christmas, the 4th of July, and Labor Day. All were unpaid. Crow's relentless drive earned him the nickname Hurry Up Crow. But his genius was to identify where working practices could be improved. One such area was excavating rock inside the diversion tunnels. Traditionally, a line of men would drill powder holes into the rock with pneumatic drills, then pack the holes with dynamite and blast away the weak layers of rock. It was slow, back-breaking work. Crow revolutionized the process by introducing the drilling jumbo, a customized 10-ton truck 
from which 50 men and 24 to 30 drills could work simultaneously. They backed the truck up to the tunnel face and drilled half of it in one go. Eight drilling jumbos were constructed for use on site. 500 drills, hoses and compressors were brought in and tunneling progressed at a record-breaking pace. But to get the job done, Crow blatantly sacrificed safety for speed and the lives of the men were placed in grave danger. During summer, temperatures inside the tunnels rose to a dangerous 60 degrees Celsius. Teams known as ice brigades were on standby to plunge the exhausted men into baths of icy water. Despite their efforts, 14 died from heat exhaustion. The lives of the men were also endangered by the lack of ventilation in the tunnels. Deadly carbon monoxide fumes from the constant traffic of petrol vehicles built up, poisoning the workforce. And those gases were building up exceedingly high in the tunnels. And the worker says, we're dying of carbon monoxide poisoning. They said the air was blue. The company says, it's not that bad. As a direct result, dozens of workers were hospitalized, suffering from headaches, vomiting, and dizziness. Frank Crow essentially did what he felt he had to do. He got the job done and people suffered for it. He not only pushed the boundary, sometimes he exceeded it. While the tunneling continued, work was going on higher up in the canyon. The men here were known as high scalers, and of all the jobs on the project, theirs was the most dangerous. The work was extremely physically demanding, the men had to swing hundreds of feet down canyon walls to remove hazardous loose rock using jackhammers and dynamite. With no modern safety measures, the men required nerves of steel. The danger of falling rock and other objects meant that the high scalers diced with death every day. The most common cause of death on site was being hit by falling objects. Because of the extreme danger they faced, the high scalers were paid 40% more than other construction workers. The daredevil stunts they performed drew crowds of fascinated onlookers from Las Vegas. In fact, many of the men had been circus performers before working at the dam. Despite these obstacles, on November the 14th, 1932, the four diversion tunnels were completed. The excavated rock was dumped in the path of the Colorado River, both upstream and down, to create two temporary coffer dams to block the natural course of the river and force it through the tunnels. For the first time in history, Man had altered the path of the mighty Colorado River. Frank Crow's rigorous regime had paid off. Phase one of the construction had taken just 18 months and was finished 10 months ahead of schedule. Crow had ruthlessly driven his men and risked their lives, but he'd shown the way for the future of dam building. Hoover Dam would have been inconceivable without one simple ingredient, concrete. Concrete had been used to build dams for over 50 years, but Hoover Dam was the first to use it on such an unprecedented scale. One of the earliest examples of a concrete dam is the Lower Crystal Springs Dam in San Mateo, 15 miles south of 